the tools that we use inside our business. These are the tools, basically software you can use basically in any business, any type of business you have. You could be a broker. You could be an independent freight dispatcher. You could be a carrier. So we picked up two tools that we use inside our you know, business, and I will be going over exactly. I will be showing you. I'll log in. Well, actually, I logged in, and I will just you know, show you the workflow you can copy um, you know, and do, meaning the copy of the workflow, and you can implement in your business. The, the tool that we use, one of them is Trillo and the Slack, basically Slack for you know, communication purposes and the Trillo for the um, project management. There are a lot of questions about what type of software you use. There are people looking for the software to use inside the independent freight dispatching business, maybe inside the, um, if, you have, if you are a carrier, maybe a broker. There are a lot of questions about the software and we need software. It's, it's basically will help us to automate. This is, I'm the guy really wanted to like automate the process as much as possible. And, you know, it's, it's just basically smoothen the, the workflow. The first, um, the tool that I use, let me make it this bigger so you can guys see it. Let me do this instead. There we go. The first one is Trillo. Trillo is, as I said, is the um, project management tool. Maybe some of you know already. Maybe you guys are using already inside your business. But for those of you who don't know the Trillo, and I will be going over um, the, the process that, that we have based on four trucks. But you are not limited. You can um, have, I don't know, limitless of trucks basically. And you can create automations inside the workflow. We'll show you how to integrate Slack with the Trillo. It's basically two software communicates with each other. So let me show you the um, website. And guys, I'm not affiliated with this. I'm not making any you know affiliate promotion or something like that. This is basically for you guys. I'm showing you that, hey, we use this tool. And if you wanted to use um, this tool, you can go ahead and you know, there is the link is a trillo.com and go ahead and sign up. I would recommend, highly, highly recommend using the free version. You don't, you don't need the paid version. You can basically do whatever you want with the free version, but there are cool stuff with when it comes to automating the process, right? So if, if something happened, for example, load is delivered, you want X, Y, and Z, meaning there's a triggers and actions. Um, if you don't want that, you know, you will be good with the um, the free version or the free plan for this tool. The second tool I'll be sharing with you, this is the Slack. Slack is basically, is as, it's, as it says, you know, one platform for your team um, in your work. This is where the, all the communication will happen, okay? Let me go to the Trillo. This is the Trillo, um, and again, this is the management a project management tool. This is where you will be. Okay, you will see the um, workflow. Let's start with the. Think about these tabs as like to do, right? You know, steps in in the workflow. What I have is the truck, basically truck number one, truck number two, truck number three, and truck number four. So I'll be moving, these are the, as I said, steps inside the workflow, searching and booking and book, uh, load booked, dispatched, picked up, in transit. In transit basically means that load um, being moved, right? So driver basically driving. And delivered, paperwork received, submitted to factoring, and then paid. The last one is the complete. Let's go back and start with the, you can basically do whatever you want with this tool, but this is in the simplest form. So we you know, created this just for example purposes. We do have our own, but it's, it's really complex in advance. I don't wanna confuse you, but at first I wanna introduce you to the user interface. This is what you can do inside your dispatching business. And again, if you're a carrier, you can just customize um, if you are a carrier, if you are a broker, you can do whatever you want with this tool. So the truck number one, and obviously I have four, say, let's say four drivers. 
So track number one, I have the label is green. Then I have the description. Description, the driver name is Jason Miller. Location, he is in Atlanta, Georgia. I want to share something very important. Be, be bear with me. Then destination, he's, um, he's, he's going to Houston, Texas or Dallas, Texas. Think about this is the planning phase. You can also add something like, okay, this is the planning phase. What you can do is... Basically, what we have done here is just showing you and giving you an example that we did the planning already, meaning we contacted the drivers. Think about if you have owner operators, you contacted them and you know where the trucks are located, how many hours left for driving, all that good stuff. So the, the planning phase is already done. So I just pull that information and here it is, you know, I'm seeing it. There's a truck number one. This driver, Jason, goes from Atlanta to Houston, as we said. So you can do many things. And again, I'm not going to go into details and in showing you like, you know, nuts and bolts of this tool because you can easily get bored and just like, no, that's that's complicated. And my job is to just simplify and show you the user interface. OK, this is these are the steps um, to start using this tool. So truck number one, what's happening there? There's some steps, workflow in independent freight dispatchers. Um, what, would, what we'll do is that searching and booking. Searching is basically you're logging into your load board and start searching loads. Loads from where? So this driver goes from Atlanta, Georgia to Houston, Texas or Dallas, Texas. So then you contact it with this truck number two. He's, his name is Alex. Location is Macon, Georgia and destination is Los Angeles, California. So in order Phoenix, Arizona, this is what he told you, right? So you're not writing on a paper, but you have a tool and you organized and you're just like, okay, now we've done the planning. Now execution part is happening here. So then truck number three and this, you know, these, um, the labels helps really, really um, helpful. So then driver number three, his name is Mike Taylor and his location, Oklahoma City. And destination, he wants to come back to Atlanta or he can also go to Charlotte, North Carolina. So then down to the, the truck number four, driver name is Austin Cooper. His location in Richmond, Virginia, destination Houston or Dallas, Texas. And again, now I know that, okay, so all of my trucks, you know, where they're located. And now I start searching. You can start searching for multiple trucks at the same time. Or what I will do for the beginners saying, hey, just pick one load. And one of the uh, great features that this you know, tool has, you can basically move anywhere you want. So if we are in the searching and booking, this is where you log into your load board. Maybe you're using um, the Trucker's Edge Pro or the that power and by the way guys there below this video there will be a link to sign up for 30 day free trial if you wanted to and then what will happen is that i will be searching origin i will put the atlanta georgia and then destination i will put houston texas so and again if you can you can do search for two loads at a time or the or serving two trucks at, a, at the same time so what will happen is that we'll be searching and why we put slash booking is because when you have the load you will start calling brokers basically negotiating um, on a you know load um and get the rate confirmation so then what will happen if you negotiated a load from Atlanta, Georgia to Houston, Texas, and you just basically say, okay, you're waiting for a rate confirmation to be arrived via email, and then you just moved into load booked. Now you're okay with truck number one. You're moving next. Who is the next? Truck number three. So now you're moving up here. Okay, now you, and again, the process is repeats itself. Now what you're doing is that you're searching loads for um, truck number two from Macon, Georgia to Los Angeles, California, or the Phoenix, Arizona. This is what your owner operator told you to do, right? So what will happen is that you will move into, okay, I booked load for this um, truck. So there are two, tr two trucks left, left, truck number three and truck number four. What will happen at the same time that you will receive a rate confirmation, and then you will call the um, truck number one. Who was the truck number one? The the Jason, you will call a Jason, say, hey, Jason, I received the rate confirmation and here is a rate confirmation. Go ahead and pick up the load. So then if you've done that, 
And your driver, meaning Jason, the truck number one, received the right confirmation or pickup address. What we will do is that you will move to dispatched. Now, you dispatch basically means that, that like, okay, now driver knows where to pick up this load, right? The load number and all that good stuff. Then, obviously, you're looking load for the truck number four. So, and again, same process, searched, you, you negotiated with the broker, you're moving this load up here, and then this load still searching. Maybe you have multiple dispatchers. What will happen then again, so this load was booked, and again, you're calling the driver saying, hey, we have the reconfirmation, and it moves to a dispatched. So what will happen, the load goes from Atlanta to Houston, Texas, your broker, your Driver called you, which is truck number one, Jason, called you and said, hey, I picked up the load. So what will happen? You Okay, that's good. You're moved into the picked up um, section. That means, okay, you good with this? And the second thing, what will happen? I'll just move up here real quick. So if it picked up the load and then you're calling the driver and he says, I'm driving, I'm, I'm heading, you know, going to Houston, Texas. So then what will happen is that you will put up here in transit and basically in transit means its load is being moved, right? It's the tr truck is moving. Same thing. And then Jason calls you and it could apply like for all of these trucks, but I'd simply just pick this load and you guys get the idea what I'm trying to say here. So the load picked up in Atlanta in transit. Then he delivered, Jason says, or emails you or calls you or texts you. And he says, hey, load delivered. And I have the right confirmation. I have the POD. And for those of you who don't know the POD, POD stands for proof of delivery. So I do see there are um, questions coming. Guys, just Hold on to your questions. We will have the Q&A at the, at the end. And whatever the questions you have, I'll do my best to help you. So here's an important step. This is, this is where the Slack communicates with the Trillo. Imagine this. You want something to happen when you deliver and when, when the load is delivered. So obviously, we'll be moving this load. Okay? So this load... Um, to the, pay, what is it, the paperwork received. Paperwork received, and again, those are the two documents we need, rate confirmation and POD. So before I do this, so we have the automation here on a paperwork. It's set up on the back end. So if, if as you can see, this is the automation. So what will happen, let me come back over here. Imagine this is the um, dispatch team, you have, I don't know, maybe four, five, ten dispatchers, or maybe a customer service representative, or the guy um, who helps you with the paperwork process. So what will happen here? So this could be, this person could be like remote. I don't know. It could be in a different country. It could be a different time zone. It doesn't matter. As long as that person has access to a computer and the internet access, that's it, right? So what will happen is then basically... Um, the Trillo will trigger an action. It will say, okay, there's the paperwork received and your team members has to do something. What is it? They need to submit those documents to factoring company to get paid, right? So see this? I did already. I tested. So there is a paperwork received and the second um the message we have submit to factoring company basically you're telling to your team saying hey load's been delivered guys let's get back to work upload those documents to factoring company so that we can get paid so just watch this this is what will happen drivers calls me basically jason he's the truck number one he calls me and says load was delivered awesome and i get the paperwork i see on my email there's a paperwork um, and then the, what is it? The, the, the POD and the rate confirmation. What I do is that then I'll move to uh, paperwork received, right? So when I do this, what will happen is that I already hear the notification message that inside, see that? I just received a um, message saying paperwork received, submit the factoring company, right? So you can play with this. You can do whatever you want, or maybe you can integrate whatever you know software the factoring company using with the Trillo 
So when the load is delivered, boom, there is a notification they will receive and you will upload the documents. So again, what will happen is that your team members confirm that, hey, paperwork, you know, um, submit it. You will just move up here. And next step is to get paid, right? So we got paid. Factoring company paid us. Then we'll move to this section where we said, okay, paid. You can put load paid or you can just have the complete whatever you want to do. I'll just give you an example. So once everything is done, then you can move load from Atlanta, Georgia to Houston delivered, right? This, and again, guys, this is the simple, this is the basic form of how you can use Trillo. And, and by the way, you can use, let me come back. Um, you can do a lot of things with this. There are a lot of automations. You can do something like, okay, if the load is picked up, um, you can notify my broker saying, hey, load was picked up. You're basically, you're not calling broker or you're not emailing broker. So these software will, you know, software will help you saying, okay, load was picked up by the driver. And then your broker receives a notification, you know, phone or email, whatever saying, hey, load's been delivered. Guys, I hope um, you guys getting, you know, value out of this. Let's have, um, let's spend some time for the Q&A. If you guys have questions, I'll take those questions real quick. So you guys liking it? So is it helpful? Please let me know. Um, let me see. Um, let me take this one. FL Dispatch LLC. Good to see you again, Kamal. Good to see you as well. Um, let me see. If we have questions, I'll put up here. Um, and again, guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. What would you offer to call in case of being the business while I haven't enough investment and I have three questions, Kamal, about my business? What are what are those questions? Please let me know and I'll do my best. But what would what would you offer to call in the case of beginning the business while I haven't enough investment? I'm not clear about so please if you have questions like you uh, you 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 told me that you have three questions please let me know I'll do my best to help you. So let's see. Michelle says um Michael says very helpful. I'm glad you find this helpful. Guys, the Trillo and again those are the two the 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 tools Trillo and the Slack use the free version. You don't need the paid version. Be honest with you. So if you are more like advanced and you want to like, you know, the automations, there are a couple of things that you can do to, to power up your um, workflow, but the free will just like do the job, um, basically. So the Trillo and the Slack use for free. You don't need to pay for those services. And if you, if you even prefer to pay for those services that, I don't know, I think it's 10, 12, 15 bucks, something like that, you know, per month. So also you can integrate these. I'm not, and again, I'm not going into details because there are a lot of automation, there are a lot of things that you can do, um, the, the workflow, but just let's keep this very, very simple. Um, let me pull this. Um, I got late to the live. Um, we'll post again on this channel. Yes, I will post this video so you can learn. Absolutely. I want to see how us, the dispatch, send invoices to the, okay, owner-operators and carriers. Is that what, what you mean? So the, the owner-operators um, and the carriers. So let me see. Let me pull this real quick. Would you advise having this truck business in joint with the family and close friends? <laughs> Or you would rather run by yourself as a one-man show? Can one person run the show? Okay, awesome question, guys. And again, please let me know your question. Let me come back to this question real quick. So uh, Truck and Logistics Solution LLC says, you know, the late, okay, I want to see how us the dispatch, the invoicing process, basically. The invoicing process, th there are two ways you can do. Let's say you are an independent freight dispatcher and you're serving your carrier, and this is what will happen. You have the option as an independent freight dispatcher once the load is delivered. Now you're skipping here 
where you are uploading the paperwork to the factoring company. I highly recommend working with the factoring company, but if you don't, this is what will happen. It's basically think about you are a service provider. You provided your services. What next? Invoicing, right? You just create an invoice. You can create a you know template and you can just edit, send to your carrier saying, hey, I did this job for you. We booked X, Y, and Z loads. And you can put those loads that you booked, meaning load numbers or just destinations and pick the origin and destinations. You just basically say, this is what it is. And whatever the charges you have, you chart, you send, and then you get paid. So there will be obviously how you you know receive the money. I would highly recommend using the, the, the QuickBooks. We use QuickBooks. So I do have, I run you know a couple of businesses and we use um, QuickBooks. I highly recommend using QuickBooks. And using the QuickBooks inside, you can send um, invoices. Okay, that will really help you. Then the second way of this invoicing part is, it, it doesn't matter, it's an older operator or carrier, but basically, you have done the job. Now, the time to get paid. You get the rate confirmation and the POD from the driver. The load was delivered. You need two documents, rate confirmation and POD. POD stands for proof of delivery. Now, once you have these two documents, what you need to do is that you need to upload into factoring company. Now, with the factoring company, your carrier must be maybe using different factoring company than he says, hey, I'm using X, Y, and Z factoring company. Please upload these documents to this factoring company so that I can get paid. I meaning the carrier. So maybe you are, I don't know, partnered with the factoring company and you can do that. For example, we use with, you know, we work with the OTR Capital. And a lot of my students work with the OTR Capital. And what we do is that you take the rate confirmation POD and you just upload. The, your carrier will give you the passwords, meaning the login details. If they don't, you can work directly with the factoring company and you can have your own dashboard. That's it. And you can um, you know, serve as many clients as you want. That is the second way of doing it. And rest, your factoring company will do the job, right? Basically, they will check whatever the money uh, goes to your carrier's account and whatever the money goes to your account. But the good part is with this meaning second way of like the paperwork process getting paid is secure. And I would say you are safe and it, it, you, you, you will be get, you'll get paid like hundred percent. Meaning before the factoring, when, once factoring company process the documents, they're not sending the money to your carrier's account. They will just, you know, subtract whatever the money you made and then deliver to your account. And then what's left to the, Carrier's account. That's how it works. Okay. There's, there's small steps, but this is basically how it works. So, hope that helps. Um, there was a second question. Let's take this. What would you advise having this truck business? Okay. Running with the families and friends, maybe a husband, maybe a wife, maybe best friend. Right off the bat, I lost one of my best friends in this business. So, this is my personal story and nothing to hide. 100%. In this channel, guys, 100% honesty, total transparency. I started my tracking company with one of my best friends. You know, sometimes things can go wrong and different mindsets. Uh, I was more into entrepreneurship, taking risks, but my partner, he was more of a like, okay, not taking a lot of risks, for example. And what's happened is just, you know, we separated. <laughs> That's what happened. So now he's running. Uh, well, he's a driver for another company. Uh, but I just, you know, kept going. That obviously because he left and I couldn't keep up with the expenses. There are a lot of lawsuits. A couple of my trucks, you know, repossessed. There, you know, there things can really badly happen to you. But I think planning, if you really wanted to do um, run this business with your, you know, friends and families, I really recommend hiring a lawyer, a small business attorney who can draft all the contracts will, you know, basically the uh, operating agreement. And we done a um, last Wednesday, we uh, we did the live with Amira. She's the small business attorney. You can watch the last video that we did, the live. And we gone over the, you know, you guys asked a lot of good questions as for as like the 
um, documents, like the agreements go. It, it, this is very, very important. You guys need to have a business plan. You guys need to have an operating agreement. The, basically, this is a document that says that, hey, this is how we are going to operate our business. Sometimes people you know, get really excited about new, new business. They forget about the bad things can happen in, in the business. And guys, and again, about 90% of things in the business, the bad things. Bad things meaning not the things that the things that going really the other way, not that that you planned and you thought, okay, this will be an awesome, but then you know things can happen in the transportation business. And again, I've been saying this a lot that transportation is brutally competitive and capital intensive business. Just prepare for this. And you you're taking another human being that you really, really love, I don't know your best friend or your wife, your husband, and things can go wrong. And now emotions out there, it's just like, I don't want that happen to you. Just be careful. I highly recommend running, when, when you're starting your business, start running your business by yourself. I'll give you an example. Um, if, if you're a wife and an owner operator, I'll, I'll give you an example. If you're a wife and an owner operator, meaning your husband, he's an owner operator. It can be wife first. It, it, it doesn't matter. But this is what we see most of the time. The wife dispatches an owner operator, meaning the well, owner operator, he's a carrier. But since many people out there, they know this term owner operator, it's the guy who owns a truck and drive, drives himself. That's an owner operator. And wife wants to dispatch. Why is it? Because they want to save some money. Why pay to independent freight dispatcher? Why pay to other person if they can keep the money inside, you know, inside a family, inside the family business that we have with my, you know, husband, for example. And by the way, guys, quick mighty disclaimer: I'm not a lawyer. It's just basically this is, um, you know, what we have. It's just for informational educational purposes only. If you want to do this, meaning start your business, starting your business. Um, for in in support your wife or husband, I highly highly recommend working with the CPA or small business or small business attorney. And this is very important. Now, what what we what you can do that there is an there, there's an option. Don't create one business, right? I would I would do this way. I don't want to just like we have this business trucking business, and then there's an owner operator, and then there's a dispatcher in, 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 in one business. What you can do if you're a wife and an owner operator is that you can create another LLC. It's basically a dispatching business. Now you can offer your dispatching services to your husband business, which is carrier side of the business. In case your husband says, I don't, I don't need your bit meaning services, you have a lot of options, meaning serving other people. Right, other carriers. There, there, there are hundreds, of, you know, thousands of people out there with, um, you know, trucks and trailers. That meaning owner operators. What I'm trying to say is that you're not limited. You can still offer your services. Hope that helps, because this is very, very important. And again, this is a business. Um, anything at any time can happen. Be careful. Um, let me see. Yes, like sending invoice with the percentage that we get to pay for. Yeah, I already discussed this with you. So if you missed, please go back. I basically explained two ways of getting paid, just sending invoices directly to your carrier or using the factoring company. You can think of a, a middleman between you and your, um, your carrier. Um, let's see. Um, hi, Kamal. <laughs> hi, how you doing? So let's see. Let me take this one. Ravnik says, hi, Kamal. I'm already working in a port and I have few trucking company. Okay. Please let me know how your course will help me for, for my growth in port work. Okay. So if I wanted to work in flatbed industry as well. We don't, we don't teach specifically how you can work with ports. Although there are a lot of you know pickups can be inside the ports, but if 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 I'm if I'm not mistaken, this maybe you're looking for a program where like specifically working with ports, but we don't do that. But how the course or the program helps, you know, students is basically think about this type of training. And obviously, we do have a pre-recorded training and all the documents you need, and then live training. 
is basically you're starting your business from start to finish. And you have the access to live Q&A calls. But think about this is the format for the Q&A, but it's more in-depth, right? And why is that? Why I'm not going in-depth? Because there are different levels. Some people don't know anything what I'm talking about. They, they, like, they're just blind. Like, come on, what are you talking about? Ports, loads, trucking. And then there's some people, they know somehow trucking business. They know loads or maybe load boards. And there's some people that are really good at dispatching. Maybe they're pro dispatchers, but they want to turn you know, their skills into a business and you know, generate revenue that way. So we do help with that, right? And, and this, the, because of that, the different levels, people watching right now, that about 55 people watching this live right now, they're in a different stage. If I go, for example, in details talking about pick one, for example, paperwork process, I need about two to three hours to explaining just the basics, right? So if I really want to dive in, it will take about two to three days to explaining you know, the process. And obviously, you will have a lot of questions. What if this? What if that? And people will just like... I don't need this. It's just like, okay, I don't want to watch this because this is very complicated. And this is why we keep it simple. But at the same time, you're learning something, but we're not going into details. This is what you are missing inside the training. And and obviously, like it, being a fair to those people who paid a premium to get a premium training. Think about this YouTube channel as like what to do, but limited on how to do it, right? The how to do it is basically reserved for the paid students. And again, and one of the reasons is that there's a different levels of people watching this right now. I'll give you an, an, another example. I just showed you the, how to use a Trello. If I just switch to a dispatch trucks and how we use it, you will see there are about 45 different trucks and there are a lot of automations. It will just, just by looking at it, you will just get confused. And it was just like, no, I don't want to use this in my business. In, in, instead, what I did is that I just created another, you know, workplace. And I will just show you the basic. Now you have the idea how to work around this and how to use this tool. Does that make sense? Um, awesome. So I hope that helps you. Okay, so there is a question. Jack says, tell us how CPA can help us in our business. I have, well, it's a great question. CPA, basically, these are the people. I would rather pre prefer working with, with, with the company rather than just a single person for the business. This is, and again, this is my personal opinion. I work with the, with, with the uh, CPA firm that based on Australia. They're not in the United States. They do have a, you know, people that like team members in the U.S., but they're the Australia-based based company. They're amazing. Since my company is online based, and, and, and again, this business model is online, they specialize in the online, so to speak, online business model. There are a lot of CPA or CPAs out there that basically they will advise you how to file your you know, LLC. They're, they're like they know maybe ins and outs of your tax, they will help you with the tax, whatnot. With, with the deductibles, basically with numbers, complying with the IRS in, in a simple, you know, words, right? But then the company that I work with, they're specialized in the online world. Not many CPAs out there, they know the online, so to speak, the business model. So how they can help you, man, imagine the financial side of your business, which is really, really crucial. And I admit, and I'm guilty that I don't know my numbers and I rather prefer hiring smart people or the company that they know what they do. I don't know my, you know, deductibles. I don't know my, um, you know, I like the tax brackets. I know the structure of my business, right? But then why this structure? Why LLC, for example, is better than X, Y, and Z, for example? Why S corporation is better than C corporation? I don't know. And then I consult with my CPAs and I saying, hey, because of the tax purposes and because of your business model, this is what it is. You need to do this. And I want, I really want to you know, share something with you, which is really important. Before working with CPAs, um, when I started, obviously, 
I wasn't working with any CPA. This is what happens when you start a business. It was just like one man show. Like I want to do myself, everything, you know, do by myself. And then you're running into problems and you don't know what to do. When I hired a CPA, one of my first CPAs, she had a company, but she was just like by herself. And she had a small number of clients, about five or six clients. And I was one of them. And she advised me. And basically, this is how I switched from being a carrier, switched to uh, dispatching other people's truck because I was losing and bleeding money. And she said, Kamal, you need to sell your trucks Close this Prime Express. You don't need this these trucks because you're bleeding money. You're paying out of pocket. And what I need to do is like, okay, I need to change a business model. Then I turn my skills into business and okay, now I can teach people how to do this because I now I know what to do. And then at the same time, dispatch other people's trucks because I know how to dispatch, so to speak, right? So... And CPAs can help you with a lot of things, man, be honest with you. Like, there's think about, you know, lawyer, how lawyer can help you. Just ask this question. You don't know. Well, let me, let me, let me take back and I say, I don't know. I don't know the laws, man. I don't know. So if I don't know, I don't know. So then I will work with the lawyer. And, and, and again, if you can, um, that I highly recommend that there was um, life. Last week we did with Amira. She is a small business um, lawyer, and we had a, asked a lot of questions. And why I did that? Because there are a lot of people will be asking legal questions, and I was like, "Man, I'm I'm not a lawyer. I can't help you." And now here's a lawyer. You can ask whatever the questions you have. CPAs and lawyers, you need those people, those professionals inside your business. Even if you don't have the business yet, and you're planning to have a business. Highly recommend working with professionals. Highly recommend. Okay. Do factoring companies charge interest rates <clears throat> or not? Absolutely. They do. They do charge interest rate uh, rates. How that goes is basically there's a thing about the service fee. Or you, th you can think of this way. If there's like $10,000 you need today, what they're, what they're saying is that think about the percentage in a different way. It's a fee saying, okay, I'll give you my money right now and I have my expenses and I need this money, for example, $200 or $300. Or you can wait 60 or 90 days or 30 days from a broker to get paid. Nobody forcing you. You can do that, right? So uh, uh, yes, they do charge interest or slash fee for the money that you get quickly. Okay, like cold calling definitely didn't, what is it, didn't think it would be as long to get a truck. Hmm, okay. Meaning you were talking to a carrier and you guys had a long conversation? Is that what happened? Please let us know. Let's take this. Jack says, can I use LegalZoom um, service as my lawyer between carrier and me? Do you have any information about it? Inside the training, obviously, we do have a um, contract, whatever the contracts you need in order to run your business. But LegalZoom can help you. I'm not saying that you know they can't help you. But the thing is that you must have a plan in mind. LegalZoom, they are service providers. Whatever you ask them to do, they obviously they can do for you, right? You can use them as a registered agent. You can use them as uh, processing your paperwork, filing your LLC. Whatever you want them to do, you pay them and they can do it. But I'm not recommending using them as a lawyer. What I would recommend is that hiring a small business attorney and then work with them directly or pay for the consultation and say, hey, here's my plan. Here's what I'm trying to do. That's it. And then you just move forward and ask this exact question saying, can I use a legal zone, for example? Um, yes. But inside the training, I do have everything from start to finish. Um, let me see. Let me take this question uh, and sincerely appreciate all you do. Thank you. It's really um, helping most of us who are, okay, in creating value in building businesses for our community. Oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. 
Um, it's the gift that keeps us giving. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep, absolutely. So let's see. You guys have a lot of good questions. Um, let me take this. Yes, got it. Send it before you got my question. Awesome. Let me take that. CPA controls payroll, correct? They can do that. They can also run your payroll. They can work with your employees. Like, think about the financial department of your business. We really good at business owners, entrepreneurs, like, go ahead and generate revenue. Move the business. But then this is very important part is, like, the financial department. And these guys know this ins and outs of the financial department, so to speak. You, you, you just hire them saying, hey, pay attention to this. I'm just giving this part to you, and I will be focusing on these parts. That's it. Now, like you have a piece of, piece of mind, nothing to worry about numbers. They will be guiding you. And with the company that I work with, think about this is very awesome. Like if I want to hire somebody, and then it can tell me that, hey, if you hire a team member or team members, in about three months, you will be running out of money. If you want to buy an equipment, for example, truck or trailer, I'm just giving you an example, you'll be out of business within two months. Why? So, And then they will show you the statistics or the numbers and break down everything. And, oh, wow, I, I, I didn't realize that if I do this, then this will affect in a, this way. Right? They see is basically the heartbeat of your business. They're monitoring the heartbeat. Right, so if you need some proteins, they will tell you that hey, you need proteins. That if you like your blood supply is low, they will tell you hey, your blood supply is low. You need to do X, Y, and Z. See what I'm saying? So this is this is very important. So um, let me take. Felix says two questions. One, how many units can an independent dispatcher units meaning, and I'm assuming it's it's the truck. Dispatcher can dispatch for at once without sacrificing service quality. Service quality, and we can talk this in, in detail. Um, let me see. What do you do? This is the second question. What do you do as a busy independent for the dispatcher when you wanted to go on a vacation? Wow, that's that's these two questions are awesome. Thank you, Felix. One, how many units? If you, units meaning you can dispatch how many trucks, if you are new, new meaning you have less than a month experience, and then if you are experienced, meaning if you have experience more than, let's say, six months, okay? So if you have less than a month experience, you can easily dispatch four to five trucks. Let's run this up and say five trucks you can easily dispatch. So if you are a pro and you know you have the tools, you have the workflows, you have maybe team members, then obviously sky is the limit. But if you're one man show, you want to like, okay, you want to know how many trucks you can dispatch if you just won, right? Meaning that you are the business basically, one dispatcher, it can dispatch up to 20 trucks if you have the, you know, tools, in, in like in in you automate and since we're talking about the automation today the, using the tools and you can see easily how you can automate most of the workflow for your business second question is very important what do you do as a busy independent dispatcher when you wanted to go to vacation this is where it comes working in the business or on the business if you are working in the business going to vacation it will be really hard and i will share a quick story with you i am more into hiring people you know working with with the team members i'm a team player and then i'm a more of a like automation i, I want to automate as much as humanly possible so that i can leave and I can control my business using my phone. Think about that way. And then we moved to, uh, let's say vacation, but it was for a business purposes. But we went there and then one of my friends, he, he had about like 20, 27 trucks. He's in, in, in car hauling business. What happened? He was on the phone all the time. Drivers calling, people calling, 
um, the, the shipper, the receiver, whatnot, they're co all constantly on the phone. I, I was like, really? I said, man, I, I, don't, I don't need this type of business. If Yes, you're making millions of dollars with, with your business. I don't want that. Even if it's just a gift. This is a nightmare. It, it's, 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 it's a horrible way of running business. You basically, you don't have a life. And this guy works from Monday through Saturday. And mostly I see him working on the, over the weekends, just trying to catch up with, with, with the paperwork, right? Why is that? Because he built a business that he basically became a slave to his business. Let me say this. I think this will clear a lot of things. Basically, he is a business. It's like moving business. This, this human being is a business. Everything connected to, to him. But to me, it's like, no, I want to decentralize myself. It's not centralized. I want to decentralize in whatever the things that attach to me, I'll detach and then attach to other people. And then obviously we can pay them no problem. But this is how you take your time out of the business. Think about in the business and out of the business. This is very important. And this is where you can have a vacation. And if you have team members, and then you can travel the world, whatever you want to do. And then you come back and you see that your business is still live and in generating revenue. When you left, you were generating, I don't know, 100K per month. And you come, came back and you're still generating 100K or maybe even more. But with this guy, with one of my friends, when he left and he was making, let's say, a million dollar per month. And then when he came back, there are a lot of problems on top of that. He lost money. That's horrible, right? So how you want to do, how you can accomplish that is basically systemizing your business. This is another topic, but this is how you delegate your time, leverage other people's time. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, you guys have a lot of questions and today you, you guys have more than one question. Having trouble finding owner operators in the three major equipment types. We do not want to work with box trucks, okay? But right now, what what is it? What is who's contacting us? Okay, meaning you don't want to serve the box truck market, but those people calling you. What would you suggest? If if you don't want to serve box truck, for example, owners, then why are they reaching to you, reaching out to you? Why do they need your services? Look at your marketing message and see what you're saying think about just you know hire somebody to run an audit for your for, for your business meaning your website if they're like people saying hey we are an independent freight dispatching company and we can find lows no problem x y and z then obviously everybody wants your attention everyone but it needs your dispatching services but on if, if you like a lot of people meaning if you have traffic coming in People visiting your website just like boldly say that, hey, we don't serve box trucks or we, we are specialized in flatbed market. That would tell them that, hey, we're not into box truck. So it's just an example, but think about if there's a message, right? Think about my message is to create a business and live the life you want. And obviously, I'm attracting those people who wanted to create businesses. I'm not talking about the uh, I don't know, political, you know, no subjects or I don't know. I, I'm just talking about the business. I'm not talking about medicine. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a business. And there are a lot of people interested in business and coming into this channel and learning and more specifically in the transportation industry, right? It's very, very important. And think about this. Since I repeatedly saying that we are serving flatbed owners, or we are in the flatbed market, the number of box truck owners, the number decreased because now they know that we are serving in, like we are in the flatbed market. We're not serving drive-in. We're not serving car haulers, not temperature controlled, meaning refrigerated market. It's just a flatbed market. Hope that helps. Okay, let's take this question. Uh, will I learn about flatbed industry? Absolutely, because I'm in the flatbed industry. Uh, from your course, and will this help me to create a network for carrier owner operators, shippers, brokers? Yes, absolutely. 
we do have a broker's list. It's a personal list that I personally work. And the, obviously, we do have a shipper's list that we share with you. Those those are the, by the way, those are the shipper's list. It's not taken from somewhere else. It's just those are the shippers that I work with. And I'm also in the import export business, and I work a lot of um, shippers. So basically, you get whatever I, I use. Think about it that way. Okay. So let me tell Shirley, let me take this. Um, hello, Kamal. Hi. Can I use the Kedia setup package for the owner operator setup package? Hmm. Can I use the carrier setup package for the owner operator setup package? Okay. To be clear, owner operator. It's a guy who owns, it doesn't matter, it's a person who owns the truck, basically bought it from the dealership, bought the trailer, and he has the company, or this person has the company. And then there's a carrier. Carrier has, let's say, consider my, you know, myself as a carrier. Let's say I have, a, you know, four trucks, but I'm not driving. I'm running my business. Think about it. I'm in the office, and I have team members. And we're just running the trucking company and then drivers drive our trucks. But I'm, I'm, I'm not an owner operator. I'm a carrier. But think about this person who owns the truck and trailer and works for himself or herself. We call them owner operators. Owning a truck and trailer and operate. Think about it that way. But then this person also carrier. Right? It's like entity type and the company type this is where people get confused but that both they're carriers so the one carrier setup will do the job there's no such a thing owner operator you know the setup package it's just a carrier setup package because if you own a truck in in drive and you have a company you have an mc number this is what i'm trying to say then you are a carrier right awesome um, let me see. Guys, there are a lot of people didn't had the chance. Let me pull those. Um, let me pull this. How did you handle your marketing in the beginning to get carriers? Facebook business page, Facebook dispatch groups, um, FMCSA, and cold calling, emailing new authorities. Awesome. When I started when when i started i i knew a couple of people that i can work with it's basically a referral think about that way i was a carrier um and then i knew a couple of people that i can you know easily start my situation is slightly different but when i started i would say growing the business uh, meaning like i want more clients i tried cold calling first and because of my english in- english is my you know Think about it. it's not a second language, it's third language. And it was to me, it was high really hard to explain or convince them. Um, but the Facebook page helped me a lot, specifically Facebook groups. That was the second thing. And I and I did use FMCSA, uh, pull some data and start you know contacting, but then I moved into email marketing, and email marketing helped us a lot. And this is and again, this we you know in our QA calls, we do teach this email marketing, the software we use. Um, and obviously, I provide the emails, how you can... Or those are the emails that I use inside my company. So whatever you listed here, I use them, all of them. But now I dropped the cold calling because I'm not good at cold calling. But I do see my um, students or people that I teach how to r- start independent freight dispatching business and run independent freight dispatching business. Some of them, they're really good at cold calling. And some of them, I do see they're hiring salespeople. And they're closing deals for them. There are a lot of ways that people are smart, right? I don't know. They, they, they can come up with, you know, if they, if they have a problem, they really will have the solution for that. So back then, like, think about cold calling. I'm, I'm struggling to explaining something. And then how am I going to convince a salespeople saying, hey, I can't do this, do you know this for me? You know, back then it was really hard for me to convince even a salespeople so that can they can work with me and we can you know start generating some revenue for, for the business. Uh, 
started that way with, with families and friends. This, you know, how I can less first friends and families think about referrals, then started using social media, then cold calling, then FMCSA. And then with the, with, with the fifth one, which is email marketing, e guys, email marketing, if you can execute the right way, sky's the limit. Okay. So let's keep it short. Okay. Let me take this question real quick. Hi, Kamal. Hi. Uh, my question, do you use one phone number to call the brokers or do you use a different phone for the different client you serve? For the brokers, for calling the brokers, I just use one phone, just just one. And for working with the carriers, for example, if I wanted to dispatch, offering my dispatching services, I use another phone. So why is that? Because my dispatching, um, the, my carrier side of the business, let's say, is different than my dispatching side side of it. Think about it that way. The carrier, meaning you own trucks, you, you're you running separate business and you're talking to your brokers, right? That's how they re reach back to you with that number. And then here you offering your services to owner operators. And obviously this is different business model. So this is how I run my business, but you can use one phone number and you can run multiple companies if you wanted to, but not recommended. Let me see. Um. Can I put the EIN as an MC number when I'm becoming independent dispatcher? To be clear here, EIN number is the social security number for your business. It's different. This is for tax purposes, for the IRS, right? So the MC number stands for motor carrier number. This is for the Department of Transportation. Two different separate, think about... Um, how can I say? The IRS, think about taxes and the DOT or Department, Department of Transportation, think about the regulation. Well, tax is also regulation, but the di two different departments. Think about that way. Let's make it simple. You cannot use EIN as an MC number and you cannot use MC number as an EIN number. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Let me take this question real quick. What license do I need to start dispatch dispatcher business? DAT power requires a license. DAT power meaning is the load bus subscription that DAT solution solutions offer or offering. The DAT power is a load board. In order to have an access, you must have a business. And I repeatedly say this, and there, there is a video in this channel you can watch, but I think it's hour long video how you can access a load board. Please watch that video. It's not that you must be licensed to be a, a dispatcher. It's actually a business license that required by the state. For example, I'm a state of Georgia, and my state requires me to have a business license. But again, it's not a dispatcher license because dispatchers, they don't have a license, right? For example, brokers, on the other hand, they do have a broker's license license but dispatchers they don't right so think about it's a business license it's not a dispatcher license so when you call the dat power to have the access meaning get the load board subscription or buy the subscription by the way there's a link that you can use for 30-day free trial they need what we need is the business license okay hope that helps and again guys i I wanted to um, invite you to the Facebook group. Let me go back. And inside this Facebook group, we have about, about 11,000 people. There are a lot of good people out there that you can ask questions. This is the link. And, and again, in the description box below, there is a link you can click and, and, and go and be part of this group. There are a lot of people. It, and by the way, I'll give you a little secret. There are a lot of carriers as well. About 40% inside our group, they are carriers, right? And there are a lot of people I will give you the secret here with you and I will share with you. And I have, and again, I, as I said, this in, in this channel is 100% honesty, total transparency. We don't, now, we don't spend a lot of money on marketing, and one of the reasons, because we do have this platform we built over the years, since 2018. 
um, if I'm not mistaken, 2018, 2019. So we started a couple of years ago to build this platform, platform meaning the Facebook group that we have. This is the link. There are 11, almost 11,000 people. And when we started, a lot of carriers joined. And we started talking about dispatching, carriers out of business, shippers, and a lot of things about the transportation industry. And people started reaching out to us, messaging us, emailing us. Those are the people who need our services. Why I'm saying this, if you really wanted to have consistent, not a leads, not a you know prospect, consistent customers, in, in a point, would you will just say, well, we don't we don't need any more carriers right now. Imagine that happens to you. You if you want that, you really need to build a platform. Groups, for example. So you can have a um, YouTube channel like this. You start talking about if you're an independent freight dispatcher and if you're serving other carriers, start a YouTube channel. Yeah, I know it's when I was starting out, it's really easy to say, do it, do it. But I don't want to do that because when when people were pushing me to start a YouTube channel, I was worried about my English, my accent, and people will say X, Y, and Z. But then we do a couple of videos and now you don't care. The only thing you care is to deliver and serve people. That's it, right? But at the same time, and again, to be honest with you, people see your honesty and, and then they really prefer working with you. Because now they see you, right? And then a lot of carriers and then a lot of students, you know, working with us because of the YouTube channel, because of the, the platforms we have. We don't use thousands of dollars now to get a client. Basically, now it's an autopilot. People watching our content, consuming our content, and then just reach out to us. Maybe independent freight dispatchers, they want to... I don't know, scale their business, they will reach out to us for a mentorship, something like that. If they're a um, carriers, they need our services, meaning dispatching services. If we need them, we obviously serve them. If we can't serve them, then obviously we just take that information and share with our paid students saying, hey, most of the time, about 90% of the time, when people reach out to us, I share that customer with my students. And, and 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 obviously, you know, this is how we operate, and this is this is the secret basically that I shared with you. Um, build a platform. This is very very important. And if you want to be part of the you know training, there will be a link below this video. You can obviously call us, or you can um, email us, or you can just you know directly on our website. You can sign up for the training. We do. It's a five week program, and a lot of people will be asking questions like, "Come on." you know, five weeks, can I finish early or than five weeks? People can finish this training within two to three days. But what I'm trying to say is that it usually takes about five weeks to get up and running with your business. There are a lot of new projects, you know, coming. Um, and then basically what I'm trying to say is that if you really wanted to start your independent freight dispatching business, you have this resource right in front of you, meaning YouTube channel. You can learn a lot of things from just YouTube channel, and then we do have, there's a link below, join the Facebook group. But if you want to take to the next level, and you can join the, the training program that we have. And again, you can complete within a couple of days. We had a couple of students that they get up and running, meaning their first carrier within three weeks, right? It, it's just crazy. Just like have a carrier and start dispatching. So... Hope that helps. And again, let me see. I think we have this question. Okay. Thank you so much, Kamal. Finally, I got my questions answered. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're welcome. Um, let me take this. You can, one phone number, you call the broker. This is coming from a carrier. Um, not sure about the question, but again, it, just one business, one phone number. That's what, you know, recommended. So, hi, Kamal. I'm new to your channel. So many informative concepts about dispatching. Thank you, kind sir. Absolutely. You're welcome. Well, guys, thank you so much. And again, if you have any questions, please join the Facebook group that we have. Um, um, let me see. If you really wanted to send me an email, that is an email. You can send me an email, uh, whatever the questions you have, and I'll do my best to help you guys. And we do this 
live um, training every Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. So if you have any questions, please take or hold on to your questions. Come back next you know, Wednesday, and I'll do my best to um, help you with your business. Thank you. Thank you.